virtual worship service of the New Hope Baptist Church here in Covington, Georgia. We thank God for this no, another opportunity and another privilege to come to, you, come to you by way of Facebook, YouTube, or whatever medium you are using to, to um, view this uh, video. We thank God. For those of you who are, are sharing um, as we do this live, and those who will see it later on, and as we say every week now, listen, if this video is a blessing to you, it will be a blessing to someone else. So we encourage you to share it on your Facebook uh, page. 
Well, God bless you. Well, listen, uh, we thank God for our graduates. Uh, we have graduates, plenty of graduates. Uh, several graduation ceremonies went on yesterday across the land. We just thank God for our graduates. And we have some graduates here at our church, and we want to give um, honor and recognition to them today. And uh, thank God for them. Listen, uh, let me just, as I'm pulling this up, I want to uh, thank uh, Sister Valerie Bentley. She has been so instrumental and with the church newsletter that's been keeping us abreast of what's been going on while we've been out of the building. And we thank God for her. And uh, so we just thank God for the ministry she's doing. Let me just read this uh, letter to the class of 2021 uh, that I submitted to the church newsletter that was published, um, I believe that was Friday on the 15th. This is a letter to the class of 2021. Uh, just as a class that graduated last year, you have endured tremendous challenges to reach this level in your educational journey. Not only have you successfully faced the normal challenges of your educational curriculum, but you've also had to adapt to, un to an uncertain schedule of in-person and then virtual learning. You have studied in a classroom, only to be uprooted within days to study in a bedroom, a kitchen, or a den. But you did it. You were flexible. You exhibited the ability to bend without breaking. We salute you for your fortitude and flexibility. If I were in your shoes, I do not know how I could have done what you have done. Consequently, in addition to the normal pride that comes from celebrating educational achievements, we're even more proud of you for your ability to overcome the adversities brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. One day you'll be able to tell your children with pride and a sense of accomplishment of the special issues you had to deal with. I pray and hope that what you have endured this year or this past year will help you to realize that there's nothing you cannot accomplish. Our prayers and hopes are with you as you continue in your educational and career pursuits. May the grace May God's grace and favor be with you always. And that's by me, Pastor uh, Harold Miller Jr. And give Pastor Miller Baptist Church, Heaven in Georgia. And as I said, this was from the, for the um, school, uh, the church newsletter. So let's recognize our graduates. I, I, I thought of no better way to do this is to just present this newsletter. Got some nice pictures on here. Um, Brother Armani Clark. Armani, a graduate of Clark Atlanta University with a Bachelor of Arts in History. He, he received an offer to teach uh, at the, uh, in the Atlanta Public Schools. His future plans are to teach African American studies and eventually serve as a principal. Armani's gone through a lot with the passing of his father just recently, Brother Melvin Clark, but he's persevered and uh, he received his. Uh, degree from Clark Atlanta University. Congratulations, Armani Clark. Brother James Wilson, Sister Phoebe Wilson's son, uh, graduating from Newton College and Career Academy with honors. And he, future plans, he plans to attend Georgia State University and major in public policy. That boy is going to be mayor or governor someday. Just mark my word. Elijah Weaver is a graduate. He's graduating from Henry uh, W. Grady High School there in Atlanta. He's an honor graduate. And his college announcements will be revealed um, sometime next week. He's going to let us know where he's going to college. Well, now he, here's some undergraduates, but we celebrate their achievements also. Uh, Brother Levi Harris was promoted to second grade at Green Forest Christian Academy. He earned all A's in the 
following courses and categories. Bible, all A and Bible, all right, Levi. Language arts, mathematics, science, health, social studies, class participation, homework, project tests, and quizzes. All right, there's Brother Levi there. Nice picture. And Austin and Aiden Lai, Lee, uh, both of them graduated. They're twins, by the way. Uh, I believe they're uh, Sister Lorraine's grandsons. Graduated from fifth grade at Rock Springs Elementary School, promoted to sixth grade. Congratulations, guys. And here's Brother Duncan Salvador Reed. He's a rising eighth grader at Five Forks Middle School there in Gwinnett County. Selected to be a peer leader for eighth grade. And he's awarded the Bronze Bronco Award for Community Advocacy, Respect, Engagement, Honor Roll. As all A's and B's. All right. Academic achievement in band, district honor band performance as sole representative from Five Fork Middle School. Of all the grades, he was the only one that was rep represented the whole school. Good job, Duncan. So Naya Goosby graduated from Cousin Middle School, graduated in eighth grade, uh, from eighth, eighth grade to Eastside High. She's going to high school. Will be a member of the Pride of Eastside Marching Band. Congratulations, Sanaya. And here's my buddy Victor, Victor Kirkland. He's graduating from eighth grade at Liberty Middle School. He'll be attending Newton High in the coming school year. Plan on participating in Newton Sound Factory Marching Band. He's accepted the Academy of Liberal Arts at Newton High. All right, recognized for academic excellence, all A's. Congratulations, Victor. And Leah, also graduating from eighth grade. She graduated from Journey Academy, Journey Academics, rather. Academic recognition, A, B, honor roll. And she'll be receiving additional awards during the graduation ceremony. And Thomas and Santiago Reed received the academic excellence for his grades. He's got a 3.9 GPA, received an award and voted outstanding musician by his class after switching from baritone to trombone in October. I can even play hambone. His band director has decided to place him in the symphonic band, symphonic band next, next year. He's skipping a grade to do that. What well, great will represent the high school in the GHSA State Golf Championship. He plays in the band. He's a great golfer. And Ansley Bentley. Ansley Joy Bentley. She's a rising junior at Spelman College. Inducted into the uh, National Society of Leadership and Success. And uh, wow. A lot of stuff going on with Ansley. Congratulations. And Vince, Timothy Vince Kirkland, that's Victor's big brother. He passed the National Academy of Sports Medicine exam and is now a certified personal trainer. Here's my little Mr. Cobb here. He's got a birthday. He didn't graduate from any school, but he's graduated to another year. So that's good. Happy birthday, uh, Christian. Uh, CJ. Amen. Thank God for all our graduates. We, we salute them for their accomplishments and all of our young people who are doing great jobs in school, not just at the New Hope Baptist Church, but all over this land and country, all everywhere in the United States. These young people today have had to go through a tremendous adversity to just learn. This is in addition to the normal stuff they go through. And so our hats off to them and we salute them for their accomplishment. Well, listen, we are in the process of evaluating things. I talked to some of the deacons the other day. We're in the process of evaluating things as to when we will probably be re-entering the building. We'll let you know more about that. Uh, later on, we're not going to give you a definite date right now. But I thought I had a definite date, but after some praying, 
uh, we might need to do some things. So we'll let you know, it, it, it won't be long. But listen, even when we do that, we are not going to abandon our Facebook friends. We're gonna figure out a way uh, to do both of these, uh, to keep this uh, virtual worship going and also facilitate in-person worship. That's with uh, Sundays and Wednesdays. In fact, uh, as the way things look now, we may be doing virtual on Wednesday uh, before for a little while longer, even after we go back uh, to the uh, in-person service on Sunday. But well, I'll let you know about that later on. But listen, thank God for your support and want to remind you of our, of our giving option. You've been faithful in doing that. And I want to remind you now that you can continue to give by way of uh, PayPal. I, believe I, I read a note on the um, uh, church newsletter to make sure you do uh, send to a friend. I don't use PayPal, so I'm not that familiar with it. But at paypal.me forward slash New Hope Cub. Uh, and I'll, uh, you can give that way. Or you can send the old fashioned way through the mail. And should you do that, that's New Hope Baptist Church. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 205. That's Covington, Georgia. 30015 is the zip code for the P.O. Box. Also, you can do by, you can uh, donate using Giblify. Uh, make sure you see the church, picture of the church and my small picture of me on the insert there. Uh, Google it. I mean, you can search by by address if you have not already um, made it. Uh, you know, uh, your favorite there. Uh, but that church address to find through Givelify is uh, 2207. Physical address 2207 Brown Street, Covington, Georgia 30014. Want to make sure you get that because there are buku of New Hope Baptist churches all over the Atlantic country. Want to make sure. You connect with the right one. New Hope Baptist Church in the Harristown community of Covington, Georgia, where yours truly serves as pastor. Been doing so proudly and thankfully and, uh, for the last 21 years. But listen, should you decide uh, to give something to Pastor or Dr. Miller personally, we appreciate that also. We uh, you can cash app us. My my cash app is a cash app sign, dollar sign, Carol eight eight six zero, and Dr. Miller is the cash app sign, dollar sign, holy holy, zero three one five. Whatever you do, uh, may God bless you for it. Is our prayer. Well, listen. Speaking of prayer, I want to remind you now that we are still every Thursday, and we will be doing this even after we go back into the building. We will not, we will still be doing the prayer line, call in prayer line every Thursday night. Because what we've realized is that, it, you know, it, the outreach is much bigger than Covington, Georgia. The outreach is much bigger than the size of our membership. We're impacting people all over the world. We just thank God for that. And so we want to continue to do that. And so we encourage you to call in to the New Hope uh, prayer line. That's every Thursday from 7 p.m. until 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we emphasize that because there are people calling from all over the country. And some are calling from different time zones. For instance, like it's... it's uh, after 12 here, it's just after 11 in the central time zone and even, even more earlier in, on the West Coast. So this is Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that number is 774-220-4020. That's 774-220-4020. 20. And after you call that number, the access code to get into the conference is 372-1137, followed by the pound sign. Listen, 
As we pray this afternoon, there is so much going on in our world. Uh, um, the, the conflict has escalated over in the Middle East with the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. A lot going on there. We need to be praying. COVID-19 is still a factor. We are not, we can see the light and the end of the tunnel, but we are not out of the woods yet. The pandemic is still around. And so I want to encourage you, my friend, you know, we, we have made this, and it, it's just the craziest thing. We are made in this country, we are made simple stuff into complex political wars. And I don't understand. I mean, to me, it's just common sense. But listen, I want to encourage you. Take your vaccine. Some people are hesitant because, well, they're saying, well, Pastor, I don't want to take this vaccine because I don't know what's in it. Well, let's be honest. If they told you what was in it, you still wouldn't know what was in it. Okay? We live in a, we live in a situation where we have to learn to trust one another. I don't know what's in my grits if I eat them. I mean, I, I read what's on the package, but even just because it's on the package, don't mean that's necessarily what's in it. And so there has to be a certain amount of trust. So let's, you know, you know, I, I, I've learned to trust people who are supposed to know what they're doing. When I'm out of my league, I trust those who are in that league. And so let's, uh, I want to encourage you to take the vaccine. Continue to wear your mask if you haven't. Practice social distancing. Because whether our success in re entering the building and going back to in person worship will, will be predicated on the number of people who've taken the vaccine. Because what, from what I'm understanding of the CDC guidelines, if you've taken the vaccine, if you're fully vaccinated, that's the, the first and second shot. If you've taken the Pfizer or the Moderna shot or the one shot with the Johnson. Johnson shot, if you in, and you pass the two week period, that means you're fully vaccinated. And so it's safe for you to, you know, to commune with people who have also been fully vaccinated. Now, I've heard reports, I've heard reports of people. In fact, there was an article in the news just um, a couple of days ago about some people, uh, members of the New York Yankees, who were supposed to have been fully vaccinated but caught the virus anyway. Well, None of these vaccines are saying that they're 100% effective, but they're 95% or more uh, effective as far as minimizing uh, your chances. There, there are no 100% no guarantees in life. There are only two things that are guaranteed in life. Uh, one, well, only one thing, really. That is, you're going to die. Chances are we're going to leave here. If, if Jesus does not come back real soon, and from what, I'm, from what I've studied the Bible, uh, there are some things that have to happen before he comes back, and those things are not happening yet. So, chances are, you and I are going to leave this world. We're going to die. That's 100% that's guaranteed. Everything else is up to chance. So I want to encourage you to do what you can. And let's uh, do what we can to get back to some sense of normalcy. And listen, when we go back, we don't want to go back the same way we left. We want to go back better than we were when we left. Well, listen, in addition to that, Family stood around, around the graveside on yesterday. Did loved ones goodbye. Whether they died from COVID-19, other sicknesses, or diseases, or even natural death, we're still plagued with violence in our community. Too many people have died unnecessarily because people can't control their temper. People can't and don't know how to resolve their differences peacefully. 
And so we need to be praying because I believe there's a demonic spirit in our world today that that's that's we need to be really praying about, particularly those of us who claim to know the Lord. So we want to be praying for those bereaved families. We're lifting up the Gooseby family. We're lifting up the LaFleur family. We're lifting up uh, all those families that stood around the graveside on yesterday. That God will conquer them as only he can. Let's go now to the Lord in prayer. And then we'll be going forth with the message for today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you even right now. Lord, for this privilege and this opportunity to just come and just share some virtual time with your people. We thank you, God, for this medium. We thank you for this platform. We thank you, God, for all of our graduates. They've gone through so much this year. And we congratulate them. And we thank you because without you, we know they couldn't have done. And so, God, we pray that you just continue to lead them and guide them as they go farther in their academic pursuits. Father, we pray for that family that stood around the graveside. Pray for that mother, that, that, that father who lost a child, that son, that daughter who lost a parent, that sister, brother who lost a sibling. We pray, God, for our community. So much going on in our community. People seemingly, oh God, have no regard for human life. Please, Lord, have mercy. Now, Lord, give us an ear. Hear your word. We might hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. That our lives may be spent in their body. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Listen, today we are going to be uh, preaching from the gospel as reported by Matthew, Matthew chapter 17. We're going to be looking at uh, verses 14 through 17. That's Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 through 17. I'm going to be reading. Uh, from the King James Version. It says that when they had come uh, to the multitude, they came to him, a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, and oft times he falleth into the fire and off into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not hear him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. I want to talk about a power failure. A power failure. A power failure. It was several years ago. In fact, it was 2003. August 14th, at approximately 4, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there was a massive power failure that blacked out all of New York City, much of the northeastern part of the United States and parts of Southern Canada. This power failure was the longest, was well, the largest rather, the largest and the worst in United States history. But in spite of the massiveness of that power failure, I want to suggest to you that it was by no means the greatest power failure ever. But I would like to suggest that there was, and there even is, a power failure that is much more massive and has been, has been lasting much longer. I would like to suggest that the church, historically and even today, is suffering from a massive power failure. 
the church today, for the most part, is embarrassingly impotent when it comes to dealing with the problems and situations faced by most people. Yes, we can, we can identify the anguish this father in the text must have felt when he brought his demon-possessed son to the disciples and they could not help him. They were impotent. They were helpless in this desperate situation. But when the power was needed most, they suffered a massive power failure. Now you need to understand, you need to understand that this father's request was not beyond the scope of the authority or the ability the disciples had been given. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, we read, and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. The parallel reading in Luke chapter nine, verse one says that Jesus gave them power in authority over all demons. So prior to this meeting with this desperate father, they had already been given authority and power against unclean spirits. So the question is, since they had been already given power and authority, why did they fail? Why did they have a power failure in this case? Why did they, why did they experience this massive power failure, especially when the power was needed most? They would ask Jesus the very same question. And I got to give the disciples credit because after they were unable to cast out this demon, they asked Jesus, what was the problem? And today, <laughs> we're suffering in the church, power failures. And oftentimes, we don't ask you why. We just say, well, it's not God's will. Or the days of miracles have gone away. Or that's no longer relevant for today's world. We write it off. And so we've learned to live with power failure. We need to ask the Lord, why? We need to ask Jesus the very same question. Why are we failing? Why are we experiencing this power failure? But now before we get to the answer Jesus gave them, I, I want to I want to look at I want us to look at some other things that we need to know about the context of this occurrence. Notice now that this occurs immediately following the transformation of Jesus upon the mountain, which, by the way, occurred following Peter's declaration at Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus said, said to him that the gates of hell would not prevail against the church. Yet, a couple of weeks later, after Jesus said the gates of hell would not prevail, we see the gates prevailing. Church is suffering from a massive power failure. Yes, Jesus had taken Peter, James, and John upon the mountain with him. And while they were there, he was transfigured 
before them. And while three of the disciples were experiencing power and victory on the mountain, the other nine disciples were experiencing embarrassment and defeat down in the valley. Oh, what a contrast. But isn't that the way it is today? Folk talk about the power. They talk about the ecstasy and the anointing of the Sunday morning worship experience. But the very next day, the very next day, they go to work with the Monday morning blues. But you see, the, the power that's experienced on the mountain ought to provide the power to deal with the experiences in the valley. The Sunday morning mountaintop experience is not just to provide a good feeling. And I'm convinced today that, that many people go to church with what I call a, a, a nightclub mentality. You know, when, when before you got saved, before you knew the Lord, you used to go out on Saturday night, Friday night, you go to the club. You, you went to the club not expecting a life transforming experience. You went to the club not expecting to find a solution to your problem. In fact, you went to forget about your problem. You went to have a good time. That's why I cringe every time we're in worship. And I hear somebody saying we're here to have a good time because we don't come to worship to have a good time. No, you, you come to worship to have a divine encounter with a divine being that's transformative, that will be transformative in your life. When you come to worship, you are not leave same way you came. If you come with a mic with a night time, with a nightclub mentality just to have a good time, then you miss the purpose of wishing. You see, the purpose of the Sunday morning experience is to empower one to deal with the everyday situation of life. The mountain revelation ought to transform the valley reality. The mountaintop praise ought to supply power to withstand the valley pressure. The purpose of the mountaintop experience is not to escape the valley, but rather to empower one to reshape the valley. But isn't it ironic? that just as some of the disciples were experiencing fascination on the mountain, the others were experiencing frustration in the valley. And this man brought his son to the, to the disciples for them to cast the demon out. The Bible says they could not. We can see that. It didn't say they would not. It wasn't that they didn't want to. It wasn't that they felt that this was beyond their scope or beyond their ability. It wasn't that they thought that this was something that, well, only Jesus could handle. But the text says they could not. Now, there are four consequences of that power failure that we need to note. First, their inability to cast this demon out was a source of embarrassment. Second, it was a cause of added distress for the father and the child. I mean, they were already stressed out dealing with this demon. And they come to people who should have had the power to cast the demon out, and they can't do it. Third, it was a bad reflection on Jesus because these were the disciples of Jesus. And then fourth, it robbed God of the glory 
do his name. I think I need to tell you, stop here and tell you that the same four issues that happened then are applicable today. When we as a church suffer power failures, it's a source of embarrassment. When we as a church suffer power failures, it's an added distress to the people who are supposed to be helping. When we as a church suffer power failures, it's a bad reflection on Jesus. And when we as a church suffer power failure, it robs God of the glory due his name. Oh, my brothers and sisters. It's embarrassing when we talk about the fact that our God can do everything but fail, but yet our lives are characterized by failure. There are people in desperate situations with dire needs, yet for the most part, the church has proven to be ineffective in making positive, lasting changes in their lives. Our our power failure is a source of reproach upon the name of Jesus and causes his name to be scandalized among the unsaved. Everything Jesus did, he did it so that God might get the glory. Oh, that men might praise his name today. If only we had some real power in our lives. Well. After Jesus cast the demon out, the disciples asked him privately why they could not do it. Jesus gave them three reasons. First of all, he said, they could not because they were faithless. Some texts read because of the littleness of their faith. I think that's still a significant problem among the people of God today. We live in a generation of unbelieving believers. And even those of us who claim to believe do not believe enough. Our faith is too small. We do not have big faith to believe a big God for big results. And as a consequence, we only ask God for little things and we get little results. And even then, our faith is stretched. If we're serving a Rolls Royce God, too often we disappoint him when you go faith. We are not to be satisfied. We are not to be satisfied with just two or three gathered in his name. When it's God's will that all men be saved. We, we are not to be satisfied with only what we can do when we can experience what only God can do through us. Second reason Jesus gave for their power failure was their prayerlessness. They were powerless because they were prayerless. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And even then when we pray, we pray amiss. Just like those disciples, that's what's wrong with the people of God today. We don't pray. Oh, yes, we say our, we say our prayers, but we don't pray. We bow our heads. And close our eyes, but we don't pray. You see, there is power in real prayer. Think about this. Jesus, the very Son of God, would spend hours in prayer, praying. That's why the miracles he performed look so easy. You see, the hard part of ministry is not accomplished by the hands. The hard part of ministry is accomplished on our knees. 
many folks are convinced the power is in praise. But real power, the power that moves the hand and the heart of God is in prayer. So the devil will not exert much effort to try to stop you from getting your praise on. But he'll move hell to try to keep you from praying. That's because he knows where the real power is. You know, it's amazing to me that more folk will show up for a praise meeting than they'll than will come up and come and show up for a prayer meeting. Now there is power in praise, but there's even more power in prayer. That's power in preaching. But the power of preaching comes from prayer. You know, it's interesting to note that there's no record in the Bible of the disciples ever asking Jesus to teach them how to preach. But there's a record where they begged him, Lord, teach us to pray. They understood that the power of Jesus or that the power of Jesus had was because of his prayer life. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. And then finally, Jesus told him that they could not because that kind of demon only came out by praying and fasting. In other words, they failed not only because of their failure in prayer, they failed also because of their failure in discipline. There was too much other stuff in the way, hindering their power or connection with God. Oh, and is that not our problem today? We allow unnecessary and insignificant stuff to distract us from the work of the Lord. We cannot have spiritual power without sacrifice. To have God's power, we must give up something. And every now and then, my brothers and sisters, we need to deny ourselves of some things so that we might have more of God. See, that's what fasting is all about. It's not about telling everybody you're fasting or having this type of fast where you're posting stuff on Facebook because when you really fast, nobody's supposed to know you're fasting. For everything, every now and then, we need to deny ourselves. And, and fasting is not just about food. Every now and then, we need to deny ourselves of the things we like to do to do the things we need to do. Yes, ladies, every now and then, you need to give up as the world turns and quit searching for tomorrow. Every now and then, you need to stop trying to keep up with all my children because everyone knows that your children are young and restless. And if, we, if you're not careful, if we're not careful, you're going to spend the rest of your days, the days of our lives, in general hospitals. And when that happens, it will be too late for all of us because we will have, we will have failed to realize that we only had one life to live. Yes, my brothers, every now and then, we need to give up the ball game. To score some points for the Lord. No. We don't have much discipline. At the first sign of trouble, we are ready to give up. We're not really willing or ready to pay the cost of discipleship. And you know what? I find it interesting that Jesus in Matthew, he says, when you fast, not if you fast, but when you fast. But we're not too big on fast. The first church specialized in fasting, but we specialize in feasting. Lack of faith, lack of prayer, and lack of discipline were the reasons for their power failure. And I suspect they are the same reasons for the 
power failure that we are experiencing in the church today. I'm wondering, anybody listening to me right now who longs for the real spiritual power, the power that transforms lives, the power that works miracles? You see, the real power, the real power that comes from God, the real failure. Is not in the power. The failure is in us. For many today have a, have a form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. But when we make ourselves available to the power, power will be available to us. But I'm glad, bless God, I'm glad that Jesus came down from the mountain when he did. He came down just in time to let this man know that although his disciples could not, he could. He came, time, he came down just in time to let the scribes know that his disciples' failure was not his failure. And so he said, bring him to me. And that's where I want to close. That because there may be someone who's listening and watching right now who has been disappointed by and is disappointed by the disciples of Jesus. But I want to tell you that when the so-called disciples of Jesus fail, don't give up. Just go to Jesus. When his disciples don't show the love they should, don't be discouraged. Just go to Jesus. When the disciples are unwilling and or unable to help, don't give up. Just go to Jesus. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. In the parallel rendition of the story, in Mark chapter 9, verse 20, it says, and they brought him unto him. I think I'll leave on that point. I'll leave you alone when I tell you that even when we, as the people of God, experience power failures, we should still bring him unto him. To bring him who is sick unto him who, who is a doctor. We should bring him who is lost unto him who came to seek and to save that which was lost. We should bring him who is in trouble in mind unto him who can give peace of mind. We should bring him who has lost his way unto him who is the way. We should bring him who has no power unto him who has all power. Oh, I don't know about you. I don't know how you feel about it. And I'm glad that one day, one day, somebody brought me unto him. Yes, I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad, but I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. My friend, just as he's done it for me, he can do it for you. Power fails all around us. We have plenty of churches, but not much power. But nevertheless, the God we serve is able. So I want to suggest to you, my friend, that even in the midst of the massive spiritual power failure that many churches are experiencing. If you can just plug in to Jesus, you'll make everything all right. I remember one day I was running late and I needed to iron a shirt. I got the iron, checked it, it was a little warm, so I started ironing and ironing and ironing, but the wrinkles weren't going out. I said, wow, just when I need this iron to work, it's not working, but then I looked, looked at the wire, and I discovered the iron was not plugged in. And when I plugged the iron in, all my problems went away. That's where I want to leave you today. You need to get plugged in. 
Not necessarily plugged into some denomination. Not necessarily plugged into any particular church. You need to get it plugged in to the power source. Jesus the Christ. The same Jesus who did it back then. He do for you right now. You can just plug into him with a personal relationship. Well, God bless you, my friend. I pray and hope this message has been a blessing to you and that you've been inspired and that God has spoken to you so that your life may be made better by the power of God through his Holy Spirit imparted to his word. Listen, as we always say, this video has been a blessing to you. It'll be a blessing to somebody else. Share it on your timeline. As you go throughout this week, remember there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that you and God, that you're going to encounter, that you and God cannot handle. So next time, may the Lord bless you real good is our prayer. Hope to see you. Listen, we'll be coming Wednesday night with a virtual Bible study. Then we'll be coming uh, Thursday with the prayer line. Hope to see you then. Until then, may the Lord bless you real good is our prayer.